Hey guys, I was asked by a lot of people, was it very heavily light polluted where I lived? This is a shot of the city I live in from an airplane window on my way home from work. And I live right in the center of that mess of lights there. To make matters worse, this row of pine trees is conveniently located directly in front of Polaris. So I have absolutely zero north sky. And don't be fooled into thinking that's a forest because that's just one row of trees in front of a storage center, which behind that is another row of trees. And take a look at this long exposure photograph of the sky. This was done from my location. It's horrible. Look at the amount of sky glow and everything. This is with no light pollution filter or anything, but it, it's really a challenge. But every shot from every video that I've posted up until now has been done from this location and it is not ideal I assure you for this video specifically I designed a mounting bracket for my camera that hooks to the dovetail that would normally house the telescope and it's just shelving braces purchased from Lowe's with some additional hardware and uh, nylon spacers and I can orientate the uh, camera or these brackets any way I want. Um, you can do this for less than $15 if you're trying to just do camera only mount. Uh, that's good because you cut down the weight on your tracking system and it's a little bit more accurate. So my first DSO video tutorial was fairly well received so I decided to make a second one. And they're going to get progressively more difficult. Um, this is also a beginner video. Unlike the first one, this uses a lot more exposures. We're going to do 60 5 second exposures. And 5 seconds is not very demanding. You should uh, either use a go to mount or an EQ1 that's motorized. And that is the, like, the base minimum. And that's like the cheapest bottom of the line thing out there. And even with not very precise polar alignment you should be able to get five seconds without trailing for the video I'm going to be using the camera only the uh, Rokinon 500 millimeter f6.3 reflex lens you should be able to use any telescope that you have um, I would recommend something under f8 but uh, you don't have to use camera only like I did for the video so the main purpose of this video is to get you familiar with stacking process and uh, a basic DSO workflow. This image should look fairly familiar to you if you've taken a single exposure of Orion. And I say that because you need to be upwards of around 200 plus focal length. And if you're just doing a single exposure, you're probably only gonna get about this much nebulosity out of it. So this should be a good starting point for you. Most people are familiar with, with an image that looks like this. But what we're going to do is go through a, just a basic DSO workflow using 60 5 second 3200 ISO shots with 8 dark frames and combine them to make this image. So to try to kind of explain why I seemingly wasted a little bit of your time at the beginning of the video with my location settings, I'm doing that to encourage you because... Uh, I shoot specifically on location because it's so horrible. I want people to see what they can do in the middle of a city with lights in their face, with terrible skies. And um, this beginner video here is just my basic workflow. And it should get you started and, um, and be a good reference point for you to uh, move forward with yours. And uh, future tutorials will get more complicated. And I'll probably do use... Uh, dark site locations in the future also but for now we're going to shoot city setting with uh, no uh, no Polaris in sight basically I use uh, a compass to find my uh, magnetic north which is not true north it's, there's two completely different things but uh, for the video so you know um, my polar alignment was limited to magnetic north that's the front leg of the tripod facing magnetic north and that is a horrible way to uh, try to get uh, precise um, polar alignment you're not going to do it that way but that allowed me five seconds and and I've also done that with uh, 
with a German Equatorial and an EQ1. I know it can be done. So if you own that kind of equipment, like I said, a space minimum, you can uh, you can follow this tutorial. Okay, so you've been out and you've taken 60 five second 3200 ISO shots and eight dark frames. And the dark frames are just uh, the same settings on your camera with the camera lens on and they'll be used to subtract the noise from the photographs. But what we need to do is with an image group that large, we need to be able to just edit one and then sync the settings to all of them so you don't have to edit each individual image that you see. There's a lot of ways to do that, but I use Adobe Bridge. I open all my files in Adobe Bridge. As you see, and you see the eight dark frames at the bottom. You can select the first file, highlight it, and then shift click the last one to select them all or you can just go to edit and select all. But you also want to apply the same settings to your dark frames that you do to your light frames. That's important. So once you have them all selected, you can right click and then go to edit in camera raw. And that's where we're going to do our initial work at. So the three things that I work on in order is first the curve, the second thing is RGB alignment, and the third being just pre-edits before I uh, make the stack. So you can see in the histogram that this uh, photograph looks a little underexposed. The uh, blue is fell way behind the green and the red. And actually the temperature setting in my camera was on cloudy white balance, on an auto white balance. So I recommend starting at 5000 Kelvin on a custom white balance. That's a good setting for stars. So what I do first is go into the curve in a linear setting and pull the entire thing up so that it pushes the RGB forward. I want that as center as I can get it in the histogram. And then I'll go to exposure and uh, raise the exposure slightly if I need to push it a little bit farther. But you can still see that the red, the blue, and the green aren't aligned properly. So under the curve, I'll switch it from RGB to each individual color and work each part of the histogram separately. And this being the blue was so far behind the red and the green, I need to work that channel by itself and pull it up until they all pretty much are centered and uh, stacked uh, on top of each other to make a neutral uh, white balance. Here you can see the red behind after I've edited the blue. I go into the red channel and I bring it up and you should be left with a, a white histogram centered in the, uh, the panel there. So once the red, green, blue seem to be fairly well aligned, I'll go into the zoom function and magnify to 100%. And that's a good place to be for uh, editing noise. You see all the noise in the photograph? You go down to the luminance noise reduction and slide it over. You really want to use less than 25, in my opinion, for this particular lens and the uh, location I'm at. I had a lot of extra noise, so I went a lot higher than that. But you want to pull the slider over until you just barely eliminate all the noise. You don't want to uh, detract from your image much, but you do need to subtract some noise before you go into uh, stacking. And that's all my opinion. Some people do, some people don't. And I guess that's dependent on your skies and the amount of dark frames, flat and bias you use. But this is a beginner video, so we'll just uh, cut it down, make it uh, usable, and then go into uh, Deep Sky Stacker. Your final image may look a little bright, but that's okay. Don't worry about that. So from here, uh, just work on the clarity a little bit and any other settings that you like that's pretty much uh, personal taste depending on the kind of image you want just make minor adjustments here and there and uh, just try not to overdo it and then uh, with the first image selected 
scroll all the way down the sidebar there and shift click to the last one and then right click and you should be able to sync the settings make sure all the check boxes are checked click on sync settings it'll take a little while but it'll apply all the edits that you did to the first image to all the images and that includes your dark frames and then you'll want to go to uh, save images create a folder and save them as uh, .tif files tiff files so once you've created that file and you have TIFF file versions of all of your original photos including the dark frames you can then uh, drag and drop them into a uh, deep sky stacker and when you do that it's going to prompt you and ask you what kind of frames they are so you need to do the light frames individually from the dark frames and then when you drop your eight dark frames in make sure to select dark frames that will create a stack list and deep sky stacker for you to work from. We're then going to go to the uh, register checked photos tab. and uh, find a star detection threshold that gives you at least a hundred stars and if you do it for upwards of a thousand or more it's going to take a little longer but a hundred should be sufficient 100 stars in the threshold just keep adjusting that and checking it until you get that number once that's done I recommend you go to recommended settings and the things that you see that are highlighted in green is what Deep Sky Stacker has selected but it may also make recommendations and in most cases you want to select the recommendations that Deep Sky Stacker makes so if you want to uh, skip that you can but it's advised to check the recommended settings but from there just hit OK and then uh, wait it out because it's a, it's a long process and depending on your PC speed and that sort of thing you may be sitting there for a couple hours or more but you're on your way you should see something that looks similar to this and if your RGB is fairly well stacked you could go to link settings and pull the uh, entire thing over until it falls in that S curve and you can see the position that I put mine and then click apply if you don't get it right the first time you can move it and click apply again and you can keep trying it until you get it just right and then go to your uh, luminance settings and that sort of thing if you want to adjust any of that once you get everything just like you like it then it's off to uh, Photoshop or GIMP or whatever editing software you have for final adjustments and that's all a matter of preference but I like to take my image to Photoshop and go into levels first and pull the uh, the center slider just to the outside right hand side of the uh, entire histogram and uh, kind of darken the image a little bit and then do further edits from there but uh, this is a basic process that's the basic workflow and and that should get you started with a uh, more advanced techniques and give you an idea of how it all works. I hope that's what I've succeeded in doing.